It has been a journey. It has been a momentous adventure. But sadly, all tales must end. All suns must set. All plays must end being plays. Uh, what I'm saying is I'm going to shave my beard. I just want to thank you, all of you who did not support me. All right, let's, let's get this over with. How, do, how does this... And there we have it. Oh, I forgot how circular my face actually is. I think we should have a moment of silence for my fallen beard. Now that that's done, let's get to the meat and potatoes of today's video. Since the dawn of man, we have yearned for the future. Technology that we have dreamt up in sci-fi movies and novels, we have come to attain over the years. When we dreamt of the flying car, we created the airplane. When we dreamt of the hoverboard, we created the hoverboard. Which is, it's not really hoverboard, it's actually pretty disappointing. But the one technology that we have yet to grasp in its fullness, in its entirety, is holograms. We see them all the time in movies, but the closest thing that we've come to achieving them in real life is the Haunted Mansion Ghosts and the revival of Tupac, hallowed be his name. However, we are actually a little closer to achieving that dream of realistic holograms than we were a few years ago. A few years ago, Microsoft released their product, the HoloLens, which was an augmented reality headset that you could see virtual objects in the world around you. This thing can do a lot. You could play games on it. You could design 3D objects. You could communicate with people via Skype in a new environment. You could play games on it. You could uh, engineer things. You could even play some video games on the thing. It was really cool when it first came out, but since it has been available, mainly it's only been used by large companies, not so much on the consumer level. So I thought, how about we take that little, little snippet, that beautiful piece of technology, and we try to make it accessible for everyone on a cheap budget. How cheap, you say? Huh, well, let's try $5 worth. Can we make an augmented reality headset out of nothing but some cardboard and our phone? The answer is yes, by the way. That's why if the answer was no, then I wouldn't have made the video. However, if we are to create this beautiful feat of human engineering, there are a few obstacles we have to overcome. The first obstacle is eye focusing. The human eye can only focus on one thing at a time. Right now, you're looking at a screen where you're watching this video. So everything else in your peripheral is blurry. If you look up and see the world around you, then now your screen that you're viewing the video on is blurry. A lot of people I've seen who have tried to make a homemade augmented reality headset is they have their phone that's reflecting an image off of a pane of glass or plastic in front of them. But that can't really work because your eye can't focus on something that's right here and something that's far away. So how do we overcome this problem, you ask? Well, my young children, I've created a solution to this problem, what I call the hollow patch. It stands for holographic orthogonal lithium oxygen patch. This isn't a new idea. It's one that I'm expanding on that a few years ago I even made a video about. I have a playlist of other videos that I've made about the hollow patch that you can click up here to see if you're already bored of this video. It's pretty simple how it works. I took a Google Cardboard or a very cheap VR headset that uses your phone and sliced that bad boy in half. When you hold half of it to your eye, one eye sees the virtual world while the other eye sees the real world. And because your brain composites both the things that your eyes see on top of each other, it creates the illusion that you're seeing a hologram in front of you. To fully understand how this works, put your hand in front of your right eye. Come on, live on the edge, do it, no one's watching, be, be, be adventurous. Now if you close your right eye, what you'll see is, well, the, the world around you. If you close your left eye, you'll see your hand in front of your face, making you look like an idiot, by the way. But if both eyes are open, it looks like there is this transparent hand that you're looking through. That is the illusion we're trying to capture with this thing. But there's still another problem we have to tackle. Problem number two! Oh. Gosh, I shouldn't have done that. I'm actually a little bit dizzy now. Anchoring the virtual world to the real world. What this means is that if I have an object, like a phone, and I put it on a shelf, if I move to the right, then the phone should still be on the shelf. It's anchored to this object right here. 
And to accomplish this in augmented reality, what the HoloLens does is it is packed full of sensors and cameras that scan the room around you so we can add virtual objects on top of those things. So you can move around them and interact with them. And your phone can do the same thing. It has a camera, though it's not as advanced as the HoloLens, there are many augmented reality apps that use this same type of functionality. You've probably seen this in the form of the Pokemon Go app, where you can participate in virtual anime dogfighting. Yeah, that's really what Pokemon is if you think about it. So what I've done is using the Unity software, I created a program on my phone that can use the camera to look for a specific image, maybe it's a card or a picture of something, and then anchor a virtual object onto that image. How did I do this, you ask? Well, it's a great question, I would love to answer, but because discussing coding and programming is very like boring in YouTube videos, I decided to compile all the instructions for how I was able to create this program in a 20 second musical segment. Download Vuforia for Unity, then you have immunity to make games in augmented reality. First, you add an image target, import 3D assets, adjust your webcam settings to test it out. Learning coding, learning C sharp, learning coding's pretty hard. Go online to copy and paste someone else's code. Attach your phone to your PC using compatible USB. Click on build and run and hope it works. Yes! Did you get all that? Good, because we are not going to explain it again. It took me so long to figure all that out, it's ridiculous. Now that we understand the technology and how it can work, what are the implications for having a device where you can interact with holograms, in a sense, in your world? One, you can interact with video games in a more immersive way if it's tied to your real world. You can create and design 3D objects without clicking on a screen by actually using your hands. That's pretty cool. Or you can optimize how you interact with social media in a way that isn't very possible in reality. But if you have any ideas on how I can further this idea, please leave them in the comments down below, or if you want to see me make something else completely different, put it down in the comments. I'll probably see it. Maybe. But this is, this is your boy, Grant, signing out. Um, 